Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are painting our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our Along the Coast watercolor box. I don't have a project to show you because this is one of those instances where I think it is valuable for you guys to see my thought process when painting something new and um, we kind of just go on this journey together and hope that it turns out well. <laughs> So um, that's the point of this. We have Michael working the cameras here. Well, hello. Now, um, you'll see in the box that this project specifically or this postcard is not going to someone specific this time. Instead, I want you to think about um, your own memories with maybe being along the coast. That doesn't necessarily have to be water-based or anything really that we've painted here. But as we were talking about um, some of our memories, Michael and I, while filming in previous tutorials, um, a big one is going with his family to the Fort Bragg coast. Um, so, and then like, think about, think about the homemade crab track, uh, traps. And, um, there was one year where Michael would go out into the yard and pick wildflowers and have a fresh wildflower bouquet on our table every morning. And we would do three o'clock cookie where, you know, every day at three, we would have a new cookie and eat it together. So just like any kind of those, things that you can pull from um, and who you associate those with, that is who our postcard is going with this time, okay? I actually saw a really cute video of this dad who, um, when he goes to the beach with his kids, he'll buy like the nice, really pretty seashells and then they'll go seashell hunting, but he'll kind of plant them before. Um, so then they kind of feel like they found these amazing she seashells and one they're not actually taking from the water. And, um, and then it just is like a really fun memory. And so I thought that was really sweet. So what I'm going to do actually is I want to show you sometimes how I like to approach smaller paintings. And so I have a bunch of outlines here from our projects. This was probably one of the first months where every project came with an outline. And I want to paint one of these in my postcard, um, but my postcard is four by six, right? And so what you can do is you can actually crop down paintings to the areas that you think are more interesting. So maybe if you wanna just do, you know, one or two seashells on here, I think that this seashell would fit on there just fine. If you wanted to do the heron, like, I, I think that might be a little odd. Just his body. <laughs> but you could do his head this way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, just take your postcard and if there is n nothing that you can think of and you just kind of want to crop this down, just kind of look through this pathway actually into water would be really lovely. Um, and kind of just do this. And one, what I want to show you with this is how you can look at things from a compositional standpoint. This is great practice in understanding composition, where when we do this, we know that that would be weird, right? With no other context, that might not be a very strong painting, but just the head, that's a strong painting. And then making sure that it stays within our paper, you know, kind of whittling this down to two seashells instead of trying to force the third on there. All of these are you making decisions on what you think would be a stronger composition on the size paper that you have, okay? And my favorite part, I think out of all of the paintings that I've done here, my favorite part is where this really wild water meets this big rock right here. And so I feel like Looking at this, I think that's a pretty strong composition, so that is what I'm going to paint, okay? And the next thing about already having the outline is um, we'll tape our postcard and then I'll just put my outline on top and transfer it. So we're kind of utilizing stuff that we already have. Okay, use your whole line soft tape. Okay, so I taped my postcard down on all the edges and then I taped my outline, lined it up to where I want it to be on the paper. And now I'm gonna use graphite paper to transfer the outline onto my watercolor postcard. So I transferred my outline and if you want, you can totally make adjustments to this, right? So after I put my outline in, this feel I feel good about the water, but I want a outcropping of rock right here. It just felt like it needed something right there. So I put it in there. So again, this is great practice in you taking the look at what your 
painting is going to possibly be and making adjustments, making decisions. And I know it's really hard and scary at first, especially if you're used to someone telling you exactly what you need to do. But the more that you do it, I mean, it's hard. It's hard at first, but the more that you do it, the easier it gets. So just stick with it. Okay, I'm gonna mix a dark blue. So I have some blue, I have some shadow. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow, but not too much, cause that's gonna make it too green. So I'm gonna add more blue. And if it's too green, you can also add a little bit of red. Red will take out that green. Okay, and I'm just going to go for it. Hit it. All right, so I'm gonna start at this line here. Spreading out this color, being loose. I'm using my six since my paper is smaller. And then I'm gonna use dry brush to pull. Okay, gosh, I love that blue. Oh, okay, next one. Go along the wave line. And just pull with your six using your dry brush. And then on the left hand side, it's going to be this darker blue. Now I'm going to dry brush, kind of like scribble it out. I, um, if you guys struggle with time and um, something that you can do or if like you're looking at a painting and you're intimidated by it like a great practice is to actually just do a smaller version it's not going to take as long it's only this piece if you I mean we give you extra watercolor paper in your boxes so you could take that paper cut them down in half or this is a four by six and just see how it feels to do a smaller version or if you don't have time to do a full fleshed out, you know, eight and a half by 10 painting, but you still want to get some painting in, make a smaller version. It's really beneficial. Okay. Sweet. And now I'm going to do another layer using a little bit darker value. I'm going to want to make sure that my water is dry. So I'm going to do a quick little run here. Okay, so using my six and a darker value, I'm just gonna start again, that dry brush technique. And don't be afraid to use the tip of your brush as well as the side of your brush. Okay, same thing on the back here, or the middle, I guess. And I know this sounds silly, but when I'm painting loose, I actually unfocus my eyes. Like right now, my eyes are unfocused. And I'm just putting color in. And when I unfocus my eyes, it does two things. It lets me see just the values. And it's easier for me to work quickly because I'm not getting caught up on the details. Have you ever tried, I mean, Michael, you don't paint as much, but we've taken painting classes together. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried something like that? Um, no, I do it when you're in other tutorials, when you talk about like squinting to see, uh -huh. you know, depth of values and stuff. Sometimes I just try to unfocus my eyes to achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, but in real life, I don't do that often. I do it on accident when I'm zoned out. Yeah. That's kind of like what I'm doing is like letting my eyes zone out and letting this kind of just be a more meditative experience. 
And again, because we're working quickly, and because my eyes aren't focused, it's just easier to go for it because I can't like totally see what I'm doing, if that makes any sense. I know you had to do it in college, but do you ever set a timer for yourself anymore? Like I have to do this painting in 10 minutes or something? Yeah, um, but not for projects. Um, when I, I like to do a morning paint session. Yeah. And um, if I'm running short on time, I will set a timer for that to make sure I don't get lost in it. In the beginning, I only did times to be like, I'm only giving myself 20 minutes. And now I basically just give myself as much time as I need. But if I need to like focus on actually <laughs> doing my job, I will um, set a timer so I don't get too, too lost in it. Okay, that feels pretty good. Now I'm gonna do my rock. I'm still gonna use my round six. I'm gonna take shadow, I'm gonna take yellow, I'm gonna take red. You can also use, like, if you want different textures on your rock, you can use your paper towel you can also use cling wrap or saran wrap to create some really cool rock textures. If you guys want a tutorial about using saran wrap and stuff, like a, a project or a box around that, let me know. And again, I'm working quick. I'm working quick on purpose. I want this, like, um, if you guys don't know anything about Impressionism, it started with the idea of it's painting in plain air, so right where you see it, and then trying to capture the colors and the lighting right while they're happening. That's why it's quick gestural movements because really what you're trying to capture is the lighting or whatever's happening right in that second. And so like that's partly why I am um, just like going for it and not being too precious is because I'm trying to honor that kind of style or idea of just capturing the feel and the movement and the light. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to go back into my water. and just do some more darker values. I'm being a little bit more thoughtful about the placement using the tip of my six and just making sure I'm getting some nice, good, dark blues in there. If you want to try this with your uh, round two, go for it. And I feel like I kind of lost my value, my left side and the right side kind of evened out in value. So you can do one thing, you can take a damp brush and just go on that left hand side and use water to lift. And then kind of like put in a little bit of color back in. There we go, now we have a highlight. Beautiful. And one of the reasons why I like this paper is because if you work quickly, it actually lifts fairly well, you know? Yeah. I was surprised about how much paint just came off of that. Yeah, and so if you wet an area pretty decently with clean water and then lift, you can lift up a lot. I 
I'm going to take like more of a yellow, medium brown, and do just some texture in there so it's not such a smooth. Okay. And there we go. Love it. Now, I will say one thing that I like to do when it comes to having a taped edge is I did a lot of brush stroke or dry brush and left a lot of the white of the paper white. But something that I like to do is just go through and smear the color all the way to the edge of the tape. So then you do get a clean line when you lift it up. So your tape line looks on purpose. So my tape line looks very clean instead of, because what that's going to do is if you leave big white gaps um, from your painting to your tape, it actually throws off your composition. Mm -hmm. It no longer has this very clear, like, this is my painting. Instead, you're like, wait, your eye will automatically go to that gap. And so even though we worked hard to let white of the paper show through, we still need a clean edge so it doesn't distract our viewer from our painting. And there so we go. Good. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Michael, you should send this to your mom or your dad. Okay. And you should be like, thank you for all those wonderful family memories. Isn't that cute? So cute. Okay. Um, thank you so much for painting with me. And please remember this is an opportunity not to make the most perfect painting, but to brighten someone's day. Your family and your friends and... Um, People in general don't care about having the most perfect painting. I think anyone would be thrilled to receive a hand-painted postcard just because you're thinking about them. And it's when we send, we I mean, and that's vulnerable for us to do as the painters because we think, what if they hate it? What if they're like, what's the point of that? You know, and, and that stops us, that we stop ourselves from showing love and kindness because we're really afraid it will be rejected. Um, but if we can be courageous and put ourselves out there and say, I know I'm not the most perfect painter, but I really have been thinking about you and I wanted to let you know, that is just putting love and kindness out in the world. And that energy will spread. And I think that's how we can maybe not totally make a difference, but at least make somebody's day brighter or at least make the world a little bit kinder. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this, for painting along with me and for being brave. I'm proud of you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.